everybody. Welcome to Codename Epic's Real World Applications. This is Black Superman along with Kirby Kid. So today we're going to do a show about powers. Good powers. Powers that would work anywhere. Maybe even the real world. Alright, the uh, first one we're going to talk about is what would you do if you had shadow clones in real life? Uh, I'll let you go first. Shadow clones. Well, let's see. To be fair, these are the shadow clones from Naruto. If you've ever seen it, which I'm pretty sure you have. Well, yeah, I mean, well, well, we hope that you have anyway. Yeah. And if Not you haven't. Google it. <laughs> But, you know, real quick, shadow clones, clones of yourself using energy from inside your body. Uh, one of the first things I think that, well, it would actually would depend on whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. I think I'm a pretty decent guy. Okay. So, homework. <laughs> <laughs> Being able to do five or six different kinds of homework back when I was in school, that would have been great. Be able to sit around and, and I'm watching TV while, you know, six clones of me are doing my work. And then once they go away, I know everything that they know. Beautiful, beautiful power. Be able to go out on a date or three. <laughs> you know, that would have been bad for me to have in college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, your, 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 your use of it is much more, uh, well, like you said, good. I would... Uh, Make enough clones to simultaneously learn everything. <laughs> get a degree, get a PhD in everything. Um, multiply my money, <laughs> you know, so I have an infinite money. And I would probably, probably kill like all world leaders at the same time, you know, just to you know make my my presence known. Pretty much, I'm going for a world domination kick here with shadow clones. Yeah, the worst thing I would have done would have been robbed some banks. Yeah, that. And I would have done that. In, <laughs> I would have done that totally while I was sitting somewhere in public. So that when they came chasing me down, I'd be like, no, really, dude, there's five million people who can tell you I was right here. Yeah. But of course, the problem with that would be if other people could do shadow clones and then they knew it was possible. No, see, I, I don't accept that because in my new world order, I don't allow people to have powers other than myself. <laughs> that works for me. That works for right? me. Right, yeah. See, I mean, Naruto is missing out on a lot of opportunities. The dude should have been mastered like every elemental technique ever. And he might be eventually, but... Probably. Right, yeah, now. Yeah. right now, he he has one wind technique. But look, I can turn wind into a ball. Hey, why don't you learn how to, I don't know, cut people with it or shoot fire out of your face? Well, I don't know, because there's a whole training montage that we didn't see, so he may actually be able to do that now. I hope so. I hope he gets another element, because, I mean, really, wouldn't you have a lot more... Like, instead of making Ross and Shuriken, wouldn't you have just made, like, a bunch of other useful stuff? Dude, I probably would have gone and read some books or something and figured out how to get the woman I've been chasing for 15 years. Right. <laughs> or something interesting. But no, I have a spinning, I have a destructo disc fused with a spirit bomb. Yay. <laughs> and that's actually useful. pretty awesome. It's really useful. <laughs> I'm just saying, he could have spent that two weeks doing something, like, better. And how did he never notice he was learning? Wow. Right? You know, yeah. How many years? He's, he's been using Shadow Clones for four years. And he never noticed that he was learning the stuff that the Shadow Clones were picking up. Like, when he's hiding and his clone goes out and fights and gets destroyed, he didn't notice, hey, I think something just happened. Or he didn't or he didn't notice that, hey, you know what? I've got intel. I know that there's a guy around the corner. Exactly. But hey, you know, whatever. It's Naruto. He's dumb. Or as smart as he needs to be for the current situation. Yeah, because apparently now he's actually pretty smart. He just always decided to act like a doofus because right. he wanted some attention. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand that. I mean, people do that in real life. You know, try and get attention that way. But, I mean, at this point, it's like, all right, look, you saved the village. Everyone loves you. You don't need to be stupid anymore. Now it's time for awesome you. Well, say it that way. Say it that way. <laughs> but back to his shadow clothes. Though. Right. Because... Uh, let's see. What else would I possibly do with Shadow Clones? Well, the mischievous me would have loved to have been able to play pranks on my mom and dad. They definitely would have known that I could, that I could do that. Though. Right. Not that it would have mattered too much, because they wouldn't have known where I was at when they were giving spankings. <laughs> like, yeah, I took a spanking. Or did I? Dun, dun, dun. Well, actually, you would have got all the information back. So, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, you, but we see them get killed and crushed and everything. They never seem to be hurt by it. Which is true. 
So it's totally okay for the Shadow Clone to get destroyed. <laughs> get his head chopped off, be set on fire. You know, that that's one of those major plot holes that goes along there. Yeah. You know, I can feel whatever it feels up until it gets hurt, and then in which case I don't feel and anything. And all, all you get is fatigue. <laughs> I mean, it should be death. <laughs> yeah, especially if, like, you got, like, Naruto, like, a thousand of them. Like, they all if, blow up all at one right? time. Because, like, if your that brain thinks you're dead, you're, you're dead, right? Like, if you die in a dream or whatever, you know, you can, like, actually die because your brain, like, gets tricked into thinking it. It's really? Then who, who came up with this theory? Hmm? I don't know. Because someone... Have, people in lab coats. Because <laughs> someone would have had to have actually... <laughs> <laughs> So to to say you know if your brain because I know I've had a dream of dying before mm-hmm. I woke up I think I'm here right yeah but see like in your in your brain you watch things like you know comics and anime where people come back from the dead so really death means nothing to you yeah it means nothing in, it means nothing to me yeah you're right you're yeah right. right I mean seriously like, it's like yeah. oh I died now I'm a zombie sweet <laughs> <laughs> you know? or now I'm back to life and I come back with some kind of power ring I mean yeah you know exactly because. So, yeah, uh, it has a different concept for you. It's a different concept for people you. People who, who live out in, like, the forest who've never seen anything, they die. Oh, my God, you know, the shock could just be enough. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, if I... There, there's a uh, there's a nuclear reactor right now that's leaking down towards San Diego. I'm kind of thinking about going down there to see if I can get some powers from it. I would really like that. I would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate some nuclear powers. <laughs> Nuclear powers, as long as no spider bites me while I have oh. so. Yeah, because then you'd be instantly fail. Well, Pretty actually, much. no, anyone who gets spider powers besides Peter Parker seems to just be awesome and have all these extra added powers. Yeah, even Sp- even Peter Parker's clones <laughs> do all <laughs> these really cool things with their powers, and then Peter Parker is just like a failure. Like, like Black Spider-Man, like the, the, the new kid, he can like shoot lasers and do other like weird crap. He can camouflage himself, like what? You know, <laughs> Spider Woman can fly and shoot beams of energy. Like Spider Man twenty ninety nine has fangs right, that, that, that eject poison. And it's like, dude, why are you still so lame? But that that's one of the podcasts. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's yeah. an entire podcast all on its own. <laughs> but uh, what, what's our what's our next ability? Density control. Oh, I like this one. All uh, right, so you start it. It's not as broken as Shadow Clones because you know you can only be at one place at a time. But I mean, I would do things like walk through walls, take what I want, do what I want. <laughs> well, are we talking about density control for everything or density control just for yourself? Well, that does open up a lot of possibilities. Because if we're doing it for just myself, I'll just be a really, really, really good thief slash, like, you know, ruler or whatever. Because you can still be killed. It's not easy, but it can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's for everything then I'm, once again, ruler of all creation. So... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's no... I mean, people wouldn't be able to stop you. Yeah, and, and I mean, especially in a place... Well, it kind of also depends on how long you had the density control. Because if you think about it, let's say you were you went into a cave and you could turn a rock into something harder than diamond. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, now no one can attack you, but do you have to keep concentrating to do that? Well, see... If we play by those kind of rules where you have to concentrate or you know you have to build up your stamina, I wouldn't make it known to the world I had powers until I had absolute control over it, where it would, I could hold it for like years without it even being, you know, an issue. Because you know, if you're gonna take over the world, that's kind of that kind of takes a lot of planning. <laughs> I notice how with each of these powers you plan to take over the world. Well, I mean, the, 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 my way of thinking is if. I have powers and no one else does, then you can't stop me. The world is mine. But if other people have powers, then I want to play the hero card because now I get to have awesome, super destructive, collateral damage producing fights, and people will love me for it. And see, you give me the same power, I don't want to run the world. It's too much work. I just want to run the guy who runs the world. (laughs) (laughs) Like, let him, let Obama take over the world in my name. Right, and I'm just running Obama. <laughs> That's all you need, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't care about being in control of everybody. I just right. need that one dude. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess that works, but there's a certain, certain flair to having, you know, your name as a uh, ruler of everything. Yeah, but see, it's the, to- it's the Tony Stark thing all over again. It's like, you know, if 
if Iron Man is just flying around in Tony Stark's name, then as far as anyone's concerned, then Tony Stark is just some guy and Iron Man is the guy we need to take out. In the movie world where they know who Tony Stark is, well, they just put a bullet in Tony Stark's head, no more Iron Man. Which doesn't make sense. I mean, outside that armor, he's not really special. And outside that armor, he's nothing. Yeah, just really. some billionaire <laughs> like Cap, guy who gets like, a lot of women. Like Cap said, <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are you outside that armor? I mean, because like Cap could just like just just take your life from you, <laughs> you know. And there wouldn't even probably be. in the armor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. But uh, yeah, density control is a different game, because uh, I mean, you could be gassed to death, caught off guard, you know. There are a lot of different things they can do to you, you know. Um, somehow magically hit you with absolute zero and make you dissipate. Somehow magically drop you into the middle of a mountain, and then if you can't keep your pa- keep their powers working, right? Or you solidify inside. That's right. What you're or like pull pull a sentry and just throw you into the sun. <laughs> you know. Ooh, that would hurt. That would hurt. I mean, until you. Well, it wouldn't hurt until you let, let go of your density power, and then you'd be human. Then you. Well, no, it hurt for me. Actually, a second, a hot second, a really hot second. <laughs> <laughs> but see, here's the question I have about that now, because if you are, if you're now like super like light and density or whatever and you get thrown into the sun wouldn't the gravity of the sun compress you back into your full form well we're assuming you have full control well maybe, maybe you could just say i choose to not be uh dense yeah but again plot holes now we we we, we understand that um like someone like shadow cat somehow is completely intangible yet is able to walk uh huh. <laughs> yeah, or completely intangible, but able to throw a punch. You know, these it things makes total sense because I choose to not think about it. Because I mean, really, <laughs> honestly, if she doesn't have her density, then she should be floating when every time she makes herself intangible, or she should sink. You're right, forever until she lets go of it. My brain hurts. I will <laughs> accept that it just happens. <laughs> But um, we can't just accept that it happens. This is real world application, right? So the point, the point well, here. Well, what, what what I have to do is, I, well, if if you make, if you make just the bottom of your feet tangible, then I guess you're gonna have to climb the it. rest of your body would would fall through, leaving the soles of your feet. But, but like, <laughs> but if you have if you have absolute control, then that means you should be able to control which parts of your bodies are tangible or not. Which means they should not fall apart because you have control. Yeah, and you would have to time your tangibility. Yeah. That would... Well, actually, I don't know. I think that maybe to a certain degree that would be instinct. Kind of like walking, right. you know, as, as you learn how to walk. I mean, there's all these things that are going right. on while you're walking, balancing, and so on and so forth that you don't know anything about. You don't think about them, you just kind of do them. Right. And, you know, like, if you got hurt with, like, a knife or, like, a gunshot or whatever, I'm pretty sure, you know, once your brain gets used to the fact that it can go intangible, that the second pain happens, your body's reaction will probably just be to go completely intangible. So the bullet may get like to, through a couple layers, maybe hit a bone, but hopefully your brain will be like, you know what? This is Now is probably a good time to be intangible. I would hope so. Yeah, I, mean, I would really hope so. Because <laughs> yeah, I would like to believe that if someone hit me in the back of the head, then I would just fall through the wall and suddenly they couldn't get to me. Right. Or like, at the moment of impact, your, it would kick in and it would just go through you. And you'd be like, ow, that kind of hurt for like a second. That'd be much better. Yeah. Or you could just pull a Madara and just be like, you know what? My magic eye says it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to magic eyes at another time when right. we talk about Odin. Yeah. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Let's see. The, the last power. This is kind of a, you know, a, a softball <laughs> for everybody else. Uh, the power to be invulnerable. Yeah, well, it may seem like a softball, but to a certain degree, it's not. I mean, if you think about it, invulnerability is probably one of the biggest plot holes that the invulnerable superheroes have. You think about the Hulk, he gets hit by missiles, it knocks him down, he stands up, he goes running through whatever. You know, even the Tick, you know, same mm. thing. Like, the the Tick is nearly invulnerable. Things hit him, his head swirls a little bit, and then he's, he's walking and, goes and does whatever he wants to. Superman flies through the sun. <laughs> and he comes out and he's like fine it's just the fun <laughs> so I mean invulnerability is great except for that well no one ever said that their nerve endings were dead 
So, shouldn't the sun have burned a little bit? Uh, you know, shouldn't that brick hitting the... It may be like... Maybe it's selective because it's like, for example, there are a lot of different things going around you at all times that your brain chooses to block out because it's too much information that, one, you don't need, and two, would, would overwhelm you. So what if your brain's adaptation to being invulnerable is that it chooses to ignore the things that it already knows can't hurt it? Yeah, but then what about, you know, the Hulk and Superman both? At some, well, maybe not now, but they both have been married at some point. And realistically speaking, their wi- their wives were little puny women. <laughs> now you're talking about, yeah, you're talking people who can be shot. Well, see, they're, they're invulnerable. They can't be hurt, but, I mean, they can control their strength. They yeah. can control their strength. But I'm just saying, if you can drop a bomb on me and it doesn't hurt, I don't really think that the I, woman touching me should. I should be able to feel it. I, I think the body, the, the brain is like, look, guys, we re- this, we really need to be tuned in right now. <laughs> I know we ignore going through the sun, but Lois is here. <laughs> this is really important. Focus. <laughs> you know, I think I, 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 I well, I would hope because yeah. if not, I would hate my powers and be like, I don't want to live anymore. But then I couldn't kill myself because I'm invulnerable. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, of course, now you have also selective invulnerability like Goku. Right. You know, who basically is as, as invulnerable as he feels like being at whatever point in time. Right. You know, he can fight a guy who can blow up a planet and he'll just be kind of standing there taking it. Yeah. But then Krillin drops a rock on his forehead and it hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I would hope, like, I, I would opt for a selective. You know, I, I keep it on all the time. Except for those special times where I need to be feeling things, <laughs> um, that's probably important. Yeah, I would I would say so. Like especially things like a you know a bath. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I mean, you know, I like a bath, but on a on a like a day when I've worked really hard, you know, a nice warm just heart. If I couldn't feel that, no, no, no reason for worth living. Right. And because this is codename Epic and it's a PG show, we're not getting any deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, there are, I mean, I think you, you probably want to feel a little bit that you're in the sun. I mean, because, like, yeah, it's not hurting you, but, I mean, am I, if I'm in the sun, I want to figure out, hey, how did I get here? <laughs> Why am I here? How long have I been here? Can well, I leave? And if you don't feel anything, you're just, like, knocked out. You're like, whatever. <laughs> you know? I know this isn't part of the show. But if you think about this for a second. Okay, Superman supposedly can only can fly to the moon in, like, 30 minutes. But he can fly to the sun in about 30 minutes. Why is that? Because Superman is a figment of comic book history's imagination. <laughs> and it and it just it doesn't make sense. He just kind of does. He's just he's like he's like Cap. He can just do what he needs to do. Like it doesn't make sense. You know, that he could survive the Kree Scroll War. He did. <laughs> you know, as a hero. Right, I mean, it's like, it doesn't make sense that Spider-Man is still alive in some universes, <laughs> you know? Or the Secret Wars. Right, yeah, like, no. How does Super, how does, uh, Superman, how did Captain America or Spider-Man come out of the Secret Wars? That should not happen. Yeah, it's like, I mean, yeah, you, you're strong compared to children, but <laughs> you shouldn't be, like, surviving. So I, I think Superman just kind of, he, he is what he needs to be at all times. And really, that's essentially what heroes are. Like, there's no one hero that's, like, consistent. Because consistency is boring. That's really quite true. That's really quite true. Like, the Incredible Hulk. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. <laughs> right? I mean, you think about it. The Hulk is, as powerful as he is, they'll come up with somebody who's supposedly stronger than the Hulk, and then nah, the Hulk just beats him. But they covered that way early on. Hulk's strength is tied to his anger and his anger is never ending okay plot hole result <laughs> bigger plot hole created like like the fact that there's no upper limits to his uh, to his anger well there it's not it's an emotion there's no quantifiable and limits look, there comes a point where i can't get any matter because you've never had well okay look have you ever had Galactus come to your house saying, look, I'm going <laughs> to eat your entire planet? Like, you've never had anything to be that mad about. 
He's fighting know, man, like was, superheroes. And when I was villains. twelve, my uncle took my Nintendo. I was pretty pissed about that. That that's like Savage Hulk mad. <laughs> but like, you've never been like World War Hulk mad. That's like that's a new level of anger. I mean, in the games, I didn't even think that that was. Uh, okay, that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. That 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 might be World War Hulk anger. Like if like, I haven't beat FF thirteen two yet because it came out yesterday, but. If someone came in right now and smashed my PS3, I may have to go Devil Hulk. You know, that, that that's about that right amount of anger. <laughs> yeah, and I dated myself by saying that I had the the original Nintendo at twelve. But, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't think there's a limit to anger or any emotion really. I mean, it's just that most people don't ever get in a spot where they're that angry because you know they're not fighting villains and. What not and seeing their family die because of them because they have powers. That's well, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Why would the Hulk ever get that mad? I mean, because technically, the Hulk can take care of pretty much anything he wants to. So why would he ever need to get that? Because because a lot of times my anger is tied into um, not being able to to deal with something. Like I got angry with my uncle because he stole the Nintendo and I couldn't do anything about it. Or I get angry with, say, my wife because she spent 400 bucks and, well, it's gone now. I can't do another thing about it. But if I walked in the house and she was getting ready to spend 400 bucks and I took it, well, I'm not angry because I got the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, usually he, he, he does calm down after the thing of his anger is gone. But, like, if you're mad because, like, you think, you know, uh, the Illuminati, you know, Iron Man and all them killed your family. And, then, like, you're fighting them. And then, like, it's almost over. And then you find out you know, a jerk on your team did it. It's like, I was almost not angry. My rage has been reignited. There's always something else that happens. You know, like, for example, like if he's fighting, like, for example, say he's fighting Sentry. They're fighting over and over again. He's getting to win. And Sentry dodges or whatever. I missed. I'm more angry because I miss. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have many one and done fights. <laughs> well, it's true. And I guess he has a lot of triggers. Yeah, Which, I mean, like, you breathe wrong. You look at me. You exist. <laughs> you know? Somebody took tanks and shot at me all day. Yeah, that's... I mean, I, I'd be a little angry. And the fact that, I mean, there's a baseline of anger because you know how the world thinks of you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so there's a, there's, there's a base a base anger. Plus, if you're a Hulk, you spend most of your life being repressed by the other you. So it's like being in a cage all day. Okay, here's another question for you. Mm -hmm. Another Hulk-centric question. Okay, in comic book land where I like to exist. The Incredible Hulk runs around doing pretty much nothing. The army shows up, blows up a, a, a town, and then says, the Hulk did it. Now, in the real world, if this really big monster guy was just kind of walking around and things kept getting blown up with all the little hippies that are running around out here right now, how long do you think that it would be before the army got told, you can't keep bringing your people in the middle of our town? Yeah, see, in, in real life, you're right. They The Hulk thing would have been resolved a lot quicker because people would have figured out, look, all right, so the giant green thing walked into my town, then you shot at him, then he said, leave me alone, then you shot at him, and then now my house is gone. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'm angry at you now, not the giant green thing because he was just walking way. through. Jumped into the middle of the house when you blew it up and got right. Me out. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He also saved me from you. So you know, it it doesn't make sense that they can attack the Hulk and then blame the Hulk. I mean, it's like saying he should not have existed. Oh, really? That's kind of rude. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, because it kind of happened in real life also. Yeah. I mean, you know, Native Americans were here and then right. And then yeah. They got wiped out. I mean, yeah, it was it, their fault because they were here before we got here. Right. I mean, yeah. I, it does happen either way. Whether you know. Blaming the military, blaming the Hulk—that all that stuff happens. But I think the, the the main thing is that he's not pretty. I mean, think about it. Like there there are other people out there. Oh, that's a nice like, shade of green. He's not shade of green, but I mean, like, you know, Tony Stark. When he was drunk, I'm pretty sure he did a lot of crap, a lot of crap, like demon in the bottle, all that. Mm -hmm. Not good, whatever. But he's a, you know a, a white guy who looks good in a suit, so we can forgive him. You know that really is true. Taskmaster, well, he's no, he's ugly. That don't don't ignore that. He's just really <laughs> useful to the U.S. government. But I mean, there are other people out there who just do like 
Norman Osborn looks good in a suit. He's psycho. But you know what? Let's give him control of the Avengers and, you know, like the U.S. government for pretty, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know? Yeah. Hulk, giant green rage monster. I can't identify with that as a person. I mean, that's why people don't like, you know, some of the X-Men. Yeah. They physically look different. Or, you know, go to, go to the DC Universe. I mean, you've got people like Batman who slinks around in the shadows and everyone's afraid of him. Superman, who everyone's really afraid of, but they're scared to tell him that they are. And then you turn around and you've got Lex Luthor, who's killed people, killed people, murdered a bunch of people. A lot of times. Yeah, blown a few things up. Tried to take over the world a few times. Got out of prison, got a pardon, became president. That makes sense. Yeah, because, you know, he's rich, Caucasian. Looks good in a suit. Yeah. But if you look different, you're not relatable. I mean, that's what I, I mean, because, like, if if the Incredible Hulk was just Banner. But really strong. But really strong. Everything's the same, except he just looked like Banner. There would not have been that much of an issue. Like, Ross would have still hated him because he dated his, dated his daughter. And, yeah. you know, as a father, you would yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, he's, it's yeah, going to happen yeah. anyway. Like, yeah, I'm going to kill you even if you have no powers. Like, you should just not be around my daughter. You're a loser. You must <laughs> not. Even if you're rich, you're still a loser. Yeah, you're, you're, you're never going to be good enough for right. daddy's little girl. You can be perfect. And you're not perfect, <laughs> you know. Until she breaks up with you, in which case, then you become the guy that she should have married. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, it's it's a catch twenty two. <laughs> but um, but you know, like if he was just Banner, he would have been forgiven, probably a lot easier. They probably mm. wouldn't have blamed him for a lot of things. He probably would have fit in better. And it's just human nature. Things that you can relate to are just easier to be around. But things that are giant and scary and green and radiate, you know, death. <laughs> he probably don't want to be around. I mean, I personally would be like, "Wow, you're awesome. Let me just work with you." Like, I carry your bags. I but mean, little kids love the Hulk, though, right? Because he's awesome. He's a giant green rage monster. Not only just in the real world. I mean, even in Marvel comics, right. you know, like the the Hulk walks up, he sits down on a bank. Some little kid walks up, sits down next to him, and goes, "Hi, you're big." Right, you know. But like, said, kids don't know hate yet. Once they're yeah, we once, once once they're taught, hey, now all of a sudden, oh, he's big and green. I don't. I mean, it's bad enough he's got an ability that pretty much most of humanity would kill for. Yeah. Now he looks strange too. Oh, okay. Now we got to hate him. And that's where that really comes in. He's got an ability most of humanity would love to have. Pretty that's much. really why he's getting shot at. Yeah. Has nothing. Even even no. The way he looks is what justifies it. Right. But it's not the reason. Right. You know, the X-Men, the the way that a lot of them look justifies them getting shot at. But it's not the reason. Right. The reason is because, well, Storm can drop a building on you. That's true. Now think about it. In the Marvel Universe, to, to the Marvel people, who do you think are the two most loved superheroes? Captain America. Right. And probably Iron Man. Exactly. See, this this is going to work. But no, those are the exact same thing about. Now, there's one thing that Captain and Iron Man both have in common. Good looking white guys? Besides that, what they can do can theoretically be done, be done by, done by anybody. anybody. Captain America can be done if you get the shot or if you just train enough, which, you know, some of it, no, can't. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but yeah. for the most part, being a strong guy who's patriotic and can throw a shield can be done. Iron yeah, Man and they did do it, U.S. agent. Right, Iron Man, you can be given a suit, you can be smart, you can be a self-made man. These are things that people can aspire to. You can't aspire to being Storm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you're never gonna work hard enough. And like, hey guys, I'm Storm now. You know, or I'm immortal and have claws that come out of my hands. You know, you're never gonna be like so good at just life. Where you can like sit in a in a wheelchair all day, put a helmet on, and know where everyone's at. <laughs> you yeah, know, you're never gonna be able to hop on a surfboard and, and surf out of the space. You can't teleport. You're not gonna be able to run through anything, or be Colossus, or be Juggernaut, <laughs> or be Jugger Colossus. You know, these things aren't gonna happen. Like if Galactus comes, no matter how hard you work, you're useless. <laughs> you know, um, and so that that's why I think people love those two because they're goals. Or even Hawkeye. I mean, he's not yeah. loved, but I mean, he's un- like he's not a he's threat. Liked. Right, you know. Um, he's liked a lot more since the TV show. Right, yeah. He's yeah, he, you know, be, they're, it's understandable. It's like I could I could be that if I, if I really try it. Like you know, people say, well, I don't try, you know, or I'm scared or whatever. But 
in the back of their head, it's like, well, I could do that. You can't do Hulk. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, here's a question then. Because, like, it's true that in, in Marvel, those two are, are beloved, but Batman is really feared, and basically, you could aspire to be Batman. But see, if he was, like, in, the, in broad daylight all the time, you would think, oh, I could be Batman. But because of how he started, the mythos he built up around himself, the fear, the being a, an otherworldly being, it, it gets to people. To the point where, like, even if you find out who he is and how he did it, in the back of your head, you still remember hearing about the stories of the bat dropping out of the sky <laughs> <laughs> and just being shot at, nothing happening to him, and just taking out everybody. That's what's in your head. You know, it's like, even though you get to look behind the mirror, it's like, mm, you know, or, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah he's but human. Not my reflection. But, right, exactly, you know? <laughs> it's like, he, he, I could put the suit on. I could be that buff, that agile, that smart. But do I have it within me to, to conquer my own fear, turn it into my greatest weapon, and drop from the sky and, and just assume that when I land, my legs are going to shatter? You know? <laughs> it's like... If if Darkseid walked into my town today, when I go fight him, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, right. No. I mean, it's like it's like, hey, Darkseid's here. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to the moon. Earth Earth's done for, guys. <laughs> you know, and Batman actually goes and fights him. Now, right. granted, he goes and fights him and says, "I'm just waiting until Superman gets right. here." Right, but well, he goes well, and well, fights. Would him. you do even that? No, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, Superman could be a second away, and I still would just not fight Darkseid. I'm like, I'm sorry, I want to live. <laughs> I'm too attached to this thing called life. Um, yeah, so, yeah, no, nah, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, yeah. Batman's different. I mean, you can't do Batman. Because you, you, you can aspire to be Nightwing. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I, I, could, I could see, you know, if I really wanted to, or, you know, Green Arrow, if I, if, mm -hmm. I, if I wanted to take the time out to do that. You know, I mean, if you were really, really, really dedicated, you could be Taskmaster, if you were, I mean, but you had well, you, Taskmaster that, is that's a certain. Really different I mean, like, like if you if you if you're, if you're good at memorizing what people do, you know. But I mean, even that's not. I mean, because people don't get mad at people for having photographic memories. True. So he has the the, the photo reflexes or whatever. Yeah, photographic reflex. Yeah. So I mean, if he people aren't mad are mad at that because it's like that's a thing that people accept. You know, like people can w look at a set of numbers and memorize it. It's like, oh, okay, well, maybe I could work hard enough. You can't because you don't have that ability. But it's not out of the ordinary. But it's like... But wouldn't that make Taskmaster a mutant? Um, you know what? That's one thing I've never understood about Marvel. There are people who are born with powers, but they're not they're mutants. They're not mutants. Yeah. I, I I think that's probably just something they just and glossed over. Technically, you know, Spider-Man's a mutant. He mutated to become Spider-Man. Right. Well, I think he wasn't born with the... I, I, think, I think the being born with powers thing, I think you have to have the X gene. But how would anyone know? It's not like Spider-Man sat down and said, here, test me, and well, I'm Well, I think you pop up on, on Cerebro. Yeah, but that's for... Don't, say, don't, Professor don't, X. don't, don't think too far into it. Don't. <laughs> you just, it, it's, just accept it. Accept it. I mean, because if you go into, into that kind of question, it's like, you know, like, if that, if that's where you draw the line at believing, it's like, dropping buildings on people, being Jugger Colossus, Storm. Oh, no, I can accept that. Okay, th that all makes sense. That all makes sense. It's the fact that some people are born with powers and aren't mutants. Yes, yeah, so that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can accept that, you know, Storm's powers are an act of God. Right. And I can accept that Jean Grey could probably destroy the entire planet if she felt like it. I just don't know what makes her a mutant and doesn't make, say, Ms. Marvel a mutant. Because her powers are granted to her somehow. Yeah, she absorbed them, but she still had to mutate to get them. No. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it just... Like if Stan Lee was here today, that'd be his response. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't have all those characters at the beginning. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Okay, but to be perfectly honest, a lot of the stuff a lot of the stuff happened in say the fifties and sixties when people didn't have these questions. Right. Now they do. Which is why they keep retconning. Well, I everything. mean they, they explain humanity in general is you know, the celestials came and messed with us when we were uh, like really young as a race, which as soon as we got the atom, all these powers started showing up. You know, like people like you know Bruce Banner, Peter Parker. Those weren't accidents; they had that potential in them. 
because of you know genes inherited from other people from that were tested on by celestials. Now I don't know why they would come down, screw with us, and give us power enough to actually be a threat to them. Some like three, <laughs> like <laughs> and then not a around. major threat, but I mean yeah, like you you would think they would foresee that and then turn around and come down and try to wipe us out for it, right? And because that's what they do, and they'd be mad that that they lost. Like dude, like you you did this to Captain America. Yeah, because Cap, like, even when the world's falling, like, in fear itself, you have evil Odin, like, having control over, like, the Hulk and Absorbing Man and, like, the Juggernaut, the world's collapsing, Thor is prophesied to die, you've been, you know, abandoned by Asgard, and the first thing on everybody's mind is that what would Captain Trump America do? can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, to be honest, I kind of believe it. I mean, he did pick up Mjolnir like it was nothing. He's like, whatever, Mjolnir. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the whole what would Cap do thing, which which makes me go, um, well, well which, would you, which would you prefer? Would you prefer to be Captain America as Captain America is in the comic books? Meaning that basically you can do things you really should have. You have no business <laughs> yeah. being able to pull off. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Or would you rather be, let's say, the Hulk, who has all this power, constantly able to do everything, however, you can never have any peace? Well, okay. Do you want the logical part of my brain's answer or the rest of my brain's answer? Let's go with the logical part first. (sighs) Captain America. (laughs) Because even though, like, the Hulk is really, he's the strongest one there is. In Marvel. In everything. Um, but Cap, like, when he decides to do something, it just happens. <laughs> like, it gets done, you know? I mean, most people can't lift Mjolnir. And he's like, whatever. <laughs> it's just Mjolnir. I'm perfect. <laughs> but realistically, when you, read, when you read it, when you saw him reaching down for Mjolnir, you I knew, knew it was going to happen. Pick it up. I knew it was going to happen. Like, as soon as I saw Thor lose the hammer and not just simply call it back, because he was like 10 feet away. You know, he could have called for it back, which might have even helped, you know, surprise the serpent. He didn't call it back. I'm like, Cap's going to get it. And he picked it up, and I'm not going to lie, that was one of the greatest moments in comic book history for me. Because I'm like, that's awesome. And, yeah, like, and five million people read this comic. Out of five million people, 499,997 of us knew <laughs> <laughs> that right. Captain America was worthy. Right, I mean... And those other three guys... We're like, he's not worthy. Oh, he's oh, that's a surprise. Okay. No, he's Cap! <laughs> I mean, Mjolnir is like, I'm lucky that he he, he held me. <laughs> he's Captain America. I mean, he's he, he's a, a walking plot hole, but see, he's written in a way that people love him for it. Yeah. He's not like Sasuke where people hate him for it. <sighs> Cap I, would beat Sasuke. That's how Cap, broken yes, Cap is. <laughs> yes, Cap would beat Sasuke. I, I totally buy that. It has to happen. Right. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Let's do a battle dome with that. <laughs> or he would throw the shield and it would just go through Susan O and just cut, cut his head off. And, and everyone would be like, yeah, I accept that. His shield's made of magic now. Literally, it's... It, it, has, it, it, it is, actually. Yeah. yeah, right. So he's... Yeah. I mean... Because we couldn't make Captain America any more broken. So no, we can, I mean, because he... give him a... Yeah. Euro metal shield. Yeah. But he's like... I remember I was, watching, I was reading uh, Avengers Academy when he was training the kids and one of the, one of the, uh, the, the girls, a hazmat... You know, she's 16, so she, she's stupid. Just understand the Cap, you know, Cap's history and how amazing Captain America is. So she's like, why are we even training with this guy? He's weak. I could just give him cancer. And the second she says that, he knocks out one of the other girls, takes her weapon. Turns out she's Taskmaster's daughter, so uh, that's kind of funny. But it takes her weapon and then throws at her and knocks her out. And he's like, what? <laughs> you, you're going to do what? Like, I just, I, I left you alone because I decided to. <laughs> and I ended you as, as soon as I could. You know, <sighs> Cap's just he's so like even like later on in the in the academy, the kids like one of the kids has the nerve to punch Cap, and Cap's just so awesome he didn't even punch back. He's like, all right, whatever, you're a kid. <laughs> and he apol he apologizes to the kid, and then like Luke Cage's like, that's an apology from Captain America. You better accept it. <laughs> you know, it's like that is rare because <laughs> he he does no wrong. You know, I mean, but. The other part of my brain wants to be Hulk because smashing is great. See, I'd handle it different than, than, than Banner would, though. I mean, I would 
try and use what limited words I had at my disposal in rage mode to try and say, look, I'm not going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, and I would try and get control over it. Yeah, see, okay, but in World War Hulk, he actually did that. And he actually articulated it very well. Well, but the problem was he was there to kill. But he didn't kill anybody. He actually yeah, said, you know what, true. I just wanted you all to see what, what backstabbing, two-timing low life." Which I love, by the way. I love when he had people come up and talk about things that Iron Man all of them had done. And they're like, that's not true. And he's like, yeah, it sucks when it's when there's a one-sided argument, huh? <laughs> and pretty much that was his equivalent of just dropping the mic and walking away. And I was like, aw. Oh. But, you know, I would try to handle it a little differently. Um, but then again, it wouldn't matter. after all this, it, it wouldn't matter either way. Because... One, being the strongest one there is, people want that power. Because, I mean, if you're the height of power, then I want it. Yeah, and if they can't take it, then they want to control you. Right. Thus them shooting missiles at you. And you can't control Hulk, because Hulk says you can't control Hulk. And what Hulk says goes. Right. I, I mean, because I love, he's the Hulk. I love how Hulk's statements are just like absolute facts. It's like, I'm going to win. It's, that's it. The only one that he wouldn't be able to win guaranteed against is Captain America, because Captain America is the only person whose plot shield... Is stronger than <laughs> than Hulk's <laughs> in Marvel. I think he'd go pretty far. In, I mean, in DC, he'd probably be like he'd probably have a Green Lantern ring built into the shield because that would just happen. Like the star, <laughs> the star would change to a lantern, and it would be all the lights. <laughs> he had, and then he'd have perfect control over all of them. And he he'd probably be like he'd probably get some like uh, Superman's blood and be like half Kryptonian or whatever. Like it would be retarded. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not disagreeing that Captain America, much like Batman, has a complete plot shield. I mean, when people have these when people have these conversations about who'd win between Batman and Superman, okay, in the real world, this isn't a contest, <laughs> right? In the real world, this is Superman stared at me and I'm dead, pretty much. But in comic book world, everyone says, well, if Batman has two or three hours to prepare, he can be Superman. Really? Well, to be fair, Batman with prep time is unbeatable. I mean, uh, even if the Hulk, because he probably come up with like a radiation absorber. Well, we already know what happens with that. Let's not even go there. That was a, <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, ah. you can look it up on YouTube. There's actually a battle between Batman and the Hulk from like the 1980s. Batman won. I love the Hulk. I love Batman. And I'm telling you that there's no way that that happens. He might but come it up, did happen. He might come up with another way to beat him, but not like that. Yeah, no, not like that. Not like that. I'm not going to tell anybody how it happens. Go look it up. And then when you see it, you'll be like, no way. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, all, it, it all comes down to, like, people just liking how people look, saying they can aspire to it, you know. That's why Cap's awesome, because he's like, like the the signal of America, blonde, blue eyes, and white. <laughs> <laughs> and in the real world, those are the things that matter. Exactly. I mean, Hulk should be a hero. Hulk is a hero. Yeah. And of course, the only person on the entire planet who realizes that is Captain America. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, and Betty, but I mean, the only people who who not even Betty anymore. Be- Betty, like, okay, all right. So, I mean, yes, spoiler true. alert, but Hulk and Banner have been separated again. Um, and Banner's trying to get Hulk back, and, you know, he, he he takes Betty to an island. He says that it's going to be for, like, their vacation. Turns out he's working as well. But he's also trying to spend time with Betty. And she gets mad and Hulk's out and leaves, saying, you're not the man I thought you were. Maybe I was in love with the Hulk and not you, whatever. And it's like, let's just examine this. Hulk is Banner. Hulk is outside of Banner, which means all of Banner is no longer there. <laughs> so, wouldn't that just tell you that something is wrong with his head, or at least emotionally? Like, maybe he's trying to get Hulk back so much because it's like, he's, like yeah. if I walk up, walked over to you right now, and I just took your right arm, pretty sure you'd want it back. Yeah, even though I can survive without it. <laughs> right, yeah. That's pretty important. It's like, hmm... I think I need that to like write. But see, and, and see, <laughs> for that, that's not even right arm. That's more like taking my legs. Right. Like all because you know, like or I your can, soul or your emotions. Well, you yeah, know? but I mean, but but what I'm saying is like yeah. you, you know, like you took my bottom half. It's really important. I could live without it, 
but I'm not really a whole meat. Right. I mean, I mean and being my arm, I can actually live with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like to be defined by a part of yourself for really all of your life and to have it gone. People flip out when they've been in the military or been a cop for a long time and can't do it anymore. You've been the Incredible Hulk saving the, the galaxy, and it's gone. Yeah. That would probably that's be like, a bit of a shock. That's like if you took Cap's power and his shield away. Or if you took Iron Man's stuff from him. Or, <laughs> or when, when Odin took Mjolnir from Thor. Yeah, Thor cried a little bit. He's I cried, cried for him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's a crybaby, but he's an epic crybaby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean... So, yeah, Betty's against him now, and she's... So, yeah, just cap. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, tune in next week when we start talking about the pitfalls of women who love powerful men. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about uh, the upcoming X-Men versus Avengers, which I think we all know is going to win that one. Well, I would hope... Actually, well, no, it depends I, on which Avengers. No, but I mean, it's all of them. Like, the initiative. So it's like, by pure numbers, they have to win. There's like, what, 200 mutants left in existence? At yeah, least they're two. They're really of, powerful mutants. Right, but two of them, like, the good ones, Beast and 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 uh, Wolverine, are Avengers. Uh, Avengers. And Storm just joined the Avengers, so that calls into question their loyalties. Not really, because, I mean, let's face it, I hated Cyclops before. I don't really care now. Right. If, you know, if they wipe Cyclops off the planet, I'm cool. You know, don't kill Magneto. I'd rather him go to prison so he can get out and be a threat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jugger Colossus. You can't... Uh, that might be a problem. That's going to be a problem. Well, Hulk's back. But yeah, but I mean, are Jugger gonna, are Colossus. Gonna, are they going to trust him enough to let him... I mean, we're talking... You know, Juggernaut versus Hulk. Juggernaut versus Hulk is no contest. At least as far as I'm concerned. Juggernaut gets a good running start. Okay, then he's a problem. But if mm. they're just having a fight... Well, the Hulk can't hurt Juggernaut, but the Juggernaut's going to lose. Or walk away. I think, cause I think the last time they fought, they just, like... Decided to, yeah. Hulk's like, okay, yeah. Like, Charles is like, yeah, we didn't do anything. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just left. It was like, that, that wasn't really conclusive, but... And I, I'm pretty sure, because I've seen it happen, because I know, I, know, I know Logan <laughs> uh, sent Kitty Pride and Colossus to go fight the Hulk in the wilderness, because he thought it'd be good training. <laughs> you know, and he did okay. I mean, if Hope was really, like, he wasn't really, he was just surprised. Like, oh, all right. But. No, there was a little girl. Oh, the that's really, yeah. that's really what happened. Like, it, he would, he would have totally killed Colossus if there hadn't been a little girl with him. Right. But a juggernaut who's also Colossus. I mean, who thought of that? Like, that must have been the same dude who thought, hey, let's give Batman a Black Lantern ring. <laughs> like really? <laughs> what? Like yeah, because he's not epic enough. Like, let's, yeah, let's let's give him power. What's next? Let's give Galactus the Infinity Gauntlet and the Phoenix Force. Like, <laughs> who was thinking of this? Like, but um, did you say that out loud? I'm, oh God, actually... no! Wait, don't do it! Don't. Do... <laughs> and then make him immune to the Ultimate Nullifier because that's just how well. It goes. Uh, if he's got the Infinity Gauntlet and the oh yeah, that, that Phoenix that, Force, that, that the Ultimate mean, Nullifier isn't doesn't really matter any anymore. Issue. Huh? I mean, I mean, at that point, the only thing above him is the one above all. <laughs> yeah. But I think, yeah, I think the only people who I see as a threat are Magneto, because he's a threat to everybody. Uh, Always. The Joker Colossus, Storm if he joins, and Emma Frost. I don't see anyone else being a real threat. Like, yeah, they have powers. I mean, they're mildly tough, but... I mean, if Cap can beat you, you're not a threat, because there's a thousand people out there who are at Cap's level. Well, okay, but I don't know. Nightcrawler's pretty pretty powerful. Rogue, Rogue depends on the day. Nightcrawler is powerful if you don't know what he can do. But they have a bunch of files on these X Men. They've been partners for a while. They have anti mutant tech. They know what they can do. All you got to wait is for him to come out. But you don't know where he's coming out from. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure Iron Man has some bull crap computer algorithm that tells you when. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, he'll predict it, or he'll just blow everything up, or whatever. But Nightcrawler can't do that much damage, though. That's true. I mean... He's he can, not that strong. He can teleport you somewhere, but, like, if you're Hulk, it's like, I'll send you to hell in a volcano. Okay, I'll just cause enough trouble and they'll want to let me out. 
<laughs> you know, and he really will because they've will. done it before, and yeah. he won't die. Like I mean, I mean, well, he could be useful. Like definitely, he could be useful. He can definitely take some people out. But Thor's back, so the whole dimension not being that serious because he just yeah, be like you know whatever. And I'm sure they have some kind of some some kind of field or whatever to negate mutant powers anyway, because it's been done so many times. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, Cyc- Cyclops is. Not I think threat. we can agree that Cyclops should die. He's not a threat. Dude. He's so not a threat. Um, I mean, because in you know in the in the real world, if I had eye beams, I could blow things up. As the, soon they're, as they're, I looked at them. they're not even real lasers, though. It's concussive force. A laser would burn. True, but concussive force uh, it would still it's still energy, so it should still move about the speed of light. So when I open my eyes, whatever I'm looking at technically should blow up. No, no, no. See that that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess, you know, since we're talking about real-world applications, that's what it should do. It should. Laser eyes means laser death. I open my eyes, you're dead. Or it bounced off, or it did, or you, you regened. Or but it should hit you but all the time. You, yeah. All the time, for sure. I mean, unless you're Nightcrawler and can bullet time and, like, teleport or whatever, but, you know, even then... It should still hit some of it. You should still come out of your teleport, like, dead. In pieces. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. but, uh... <laughs> so... But, I don't. I don't see the X Men. Oh, oh, sorry. I don't. I don't see the X Men winning this one. There's too few of them that are mat that matter. Yeah, that's really that really is true. I mean, that, but see, and in that, that's one of those things I don't understand, because the entire world has been chasing after mutants. They're trying to wipe them out. But really, honestly, when you look at them, I mean, every mutant except for the few that were in the Xavier School Academy were up in space on asteroid M. There were only about four hundred of them. Out of 7 billion people, we're trying to wipe out 400. Now, granted, <laughs> these 400 can take over your mind, crack the plan in half, can't be killed, can kill anything they want, can lift cities from space. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a little harder than 400. I mean, like, it's probably like... Like, in terms of how tough it is, it's probably like trying to kill... Okay, fine. One billion versus seven. Right. But that's still hard, though, because 99... Okay, 90% of people are useless. Yeah. Let's just be honest. 90% of people in the world are useless because they don't lead. They don't have that drive. And they're not going to fight either. Right. Or they're afraid of the guy who can walk through, like, whatever he wants to, actually. Actually, I'm afraid of the guy who can walk yeah. through whatever so, he I wants mean, to. Yeah. So, I mean, like... I mean, and then really, in that 10%, like, 1% of them have powers or means to fight. And then, within that 1%, 90% of them like the people who are X-Men. <laughs> or which, work with them or something, you know? Yeah, which is which does make for an interesting dynamic when it comes to this fight. Because when you start off by saying that, you know, the Avengers are, like, say there's 400 mutants and then there's, like, 1,000 Avengers. Right. Yeah, but half of the, those 1,000 Avengers aren't going to want any part of this fight. Right. I mean, because, like, right now in the comics... Um, Cyclops just saved Iron Man, Falcon, and Cap from Cable, who came back trying to kill. Oh, and the Red Hulk, but I don't. I dislike the Red Hulk. Um, he came back to save them because Cable came back from the future trying to kill the Avengers because apparently they do something really, really bad to mutants. Like, like I told you earlier, earlier they had all this Sentinel tech, all this mm. anti-mutant stuff. So apparently, something really bad <laughs> happened to mutants. Maybe they the, created the Legacy Virus. Maybe, maybe. I mean, granted, the legacy virus already has a creator, but, you know, retcons happen all the time. The time stream is very easy to manipulate, apparently. (laughs) Like, they had Doctor Doom's time machine. Uh, Don't know how that happened. Don't know how Doom allowed that, because Doom is amazing. But, (laughs) um, yeah, so he tried to kill them because they're doing something in the future, and Scott just saved them. He said, you can't do this. So it's like, if you're getting ready to fight, I mean, you seem to have... But then again, like, in Avengers Academy, they got in a fight. Like, for just no reason. <laughs> so, I don't understand, you know, I mean... I, well, uh, there, there's a saying, um, I, don't have to res- I don't have to like you to respect you. So, right. you know, everybody respects Captain America. That's true. Even his enemies respect him. That's true. I mean, you know, they walk in and they go, Captain America. Right. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like in the... Uh, in the, uh, the, um, the the cartoon, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Zemo's like, I don't want Hydra. I just want to kill Cap. <laughs> That's it. I'll plan my life after that. I just want to take him down. Yeah, like, you can take Hydra. 
I'm done with it. Right. I just want Captain America. And see, and that in and of itself really is kind of the basis for how cool he he actually is. I mean, Captain America has no powers. I mean, granted, okay, he is the he is as strong as any human being could possibly be. Okay, any of you who watch professional wrestling, there's a guy named Mark Henry. Okay, he's stronger than that. Okay, now, the strongest man on the planet as far as normal people can go. The most agile man on the planet as far as normal people can go. And I believe that he would have to be really, really smart also. I think that the serum probably would affect it probably his, incre- his, yeah. his brain capacity. For no other reason than because there's no way you should be able to learn how to do that with a shield in a couple of days. But really, he did like the first time he did it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, from the get-go, it's like, shield flash. Oh, that's awesome. And it's like, oh, and it bounces back. Sweet. You know, I mean... <laughs> it's always back to his hand. That's some crazy math. That's my point. That that serum had to have affected his brain also because like, there's no way that you should be able to look at three corners, toss your shield that way behind you, and then sit there and watch the guy in front of you as the shield comes back, hits him in the back of the head, doesn't cut his head off, right? And then flies back to your hand. Yeah, so it hits his head and it's still able to keep going straight, but didn't kill him. He's like a geometry professor on crack, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like he probably be really good at pool. Like, crazy good at pool with a shield. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, one shot, and then all the balls go in. But, I mean, like, let, let, let's do a prediction right now. Who do you think is going to win? Cap? I mean, I'm sorry, the Avengers. It's really just it's Cap. Really cap. It's really yeah. just Cap. But, because, like, on the cover, it shows him and Cyclops staring at each other like, yeah. I'm like, Cyclops, you're at point blank, and you're still going to lose this fight. <laughs> but, who do you think is going to win? X-Men or the Avengers? Well, if that cover were to come true and, you know, Cyclops would actually take a shot which he probably would miss, um, <laughs> <laughs> then I would say possibly the X-Men because without Captain America, the X-Men have a chance. But we all know that they've already killed Captain America, so he ain't going to die anytime soon. <laughs> now, so, <laughs> can Cyclops can he shoot lasers without putting his hand to his visor? Or does he still need to do that? No, he has to lift the visor. Well, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to touch the visor anymore. Mm-hmm. He used to have to touch the visor to, to remove the ruby quartz um, shield. Right. But... Professor X put some kind of mind um, apparatus into so it. He just do it, so he just stares and now it shoots. So he doesn't have to touch it. He doesn't have that tail anymore. It should just open and blast things, which makes him even more of a failure. Because, <laughs> <laughs> Before he had an excuse, now because he at no least excuse. they knew he was getting ready to shoot. Now he just opens it and fires. Yeah, this is going to be a bloodbath. Uh, yeah. Now, who do you think um, Storm, Wolverine, and Beast will side with? The X Men. Yeah, that's true. Because I, I remember Wolverine was saying, you know, the Avengers is our day job. The mm. X Men is our family. Yeah, but I mean, he hates he hates Cyclops. Yeah, but and if it comes Cap, down to somebody, he Cap, though. Yeah. true. You gotta side with Cap. But, in, in, in any conflict, if you're confused about what's going on, don't think. Cap. Just join Cap, <laughs> and you're right. <laughs> but as much as he hates Cyclops, he'll kill you over Cyclops. Yeah, that's true. He hates Cyclops, but you better. But he's like he's like the little brother you can't stand, right? Or like, the older brother? Or yeah, no, 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 <laughs> definitely the little brother because this is Wolverine we're talking about. He's a hundred years old. Oh, you mean Cyclops being the little brother? Yeah. yeah, he's like the little brother you can't stand. But you love him. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. I'll, kill, I'll kill you over him. I'll beat his butt after I kill you. Right. But yeah, yeah. So, but I I don't think Wolverine might just quick to stay out of it. But see, in the in the cover though that that shows on the the, the first X Men versus um. Avengers, Wolverine's on the Avenger side. So is Beast. They're, so, they're, the behind, idea. they're behind Cap. So they're like, look, in any conflict, just follow Cap. It won't last. Yeah, there'll, there'll be some waffling back and forth. Something's gonna happen, you know, like, so, like, maybe Rogue will say, Rogue will get hit or something, and then that'll be, a, that'll be all it takes, and then they'll Or they'll find the Tony Stark has Sentinel Tech, and Cap will be like, dude, come on. <laughs> or they'll discover, or they'll discover something like this whole war was started by something that had nothing to do with either side, and they'll both team up again, or whatever, because yeah. that's a cop out. No, I want, I want a bloodbath. I want to see either the Avengers put an end to mutant kind, or the mutants put a big hole in the Avengers, because you know they're not gonna, they can't beat the Avengers. No, but they, but they can cripple them really bad. I'm gonna tell you something that you're gonna find really sad though. Hmm. I read somewhere that this may be just a way for them to uh, reboot Marvel. That makes sense because DC just did it. Yeah. So I mean, it's like in Shonen Jump, 
Naruto did a time skip. Now everyone and their grandma decide, we need a time skip. <laughs> you know? Um, so, I mean, it, make, it makes sense that they would go out with a bang, you know, like this. Yeah, I mean, it, and it does. And then, you know, DC DC had had been number two by a lot for a long time, but DC has been number one for the past, like, six months. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear that. Sometimes I go selectively deaf. <laughs> it just happens randomly sometimes. Um... I'm confused. I don't know what I don't know what happened. I'm kind of dazed. Like, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it makes sense though. I mean, a reboot that that would get my attention. Yeah, and it brought a lot of people back to DC. Yeah, it brought a lot of people back to DC. Plus, oddly enough, even though I was totally against it when it first happened, hmm. it's interesting. Yeah, like Except I the actually, whole Batman thing, which doesn't make any sense. I actually like the Superman reboot, and you know how hard it is for me to like anything Superman, like. Touching the book, actually, my hands burned the entire time I read it, but I liked it. Like when um, <laughs> when Green Lantern's like, don't worry, I'm going to handle this guy real quick. <laughs> and then he got thrown out of the building. He's like, so that didn't go so well. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a little, little stronger than I thought he was originally. Well, that's one thing about, that's one thing about the new, the, this new take on Superman that I liked that I didn't like that got a little bit over the top before. Superman before... If he thought you were a good guy or he thought you could tell you, talk to you, he wouldn't hit you, no matter how much you were hitting him. This Superman just kind of says, hey, no, I'm not taking that, and then tosses you through a building. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. That's a very Hulk way of handling things. Um, <laughs> see what he's learned from the master. But I, I would like a reboot of Marvel because, one, I want to see the original team of the Avengers back together. And this time, they need to respect Hulk. I mean, they don't. I mean, like... If you look at Avengers Academy, they have a, a, a statue of the founding team, and everyone but Hulk is there. That's horrible, right? Because like, even though you may have had a falling out, I mean, there are a lot of fights you probably wouldn't have won without the strongest one there is being on your side. And even when they were shooting him off into space, they're like, you know, Bruce, we know that you were one of the founding members, and you know, we hope that you don't hate us too much as we send you off to a place where you should have some peace. There's nothing else there. Okay, I'm not going to hate you, but you're going to send me to a place where there's nothing else there? Nothing. That's, that's a little boring. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, no bunny rabbits, no nothing. Right. I mean, I get... I get well, they said that there's wild game. But the, you can't talk to game. <laughs> you eat game. <laughs> but, I mean, like, I, I, I want to see them take a different different shot at Hulk. Write that a little better. Um, maybe... I, I want them to write the Avengers team and keep, keep it for a while. You know, keep them good. Because, like, now... Like, when Tony's building them, he's like, you know, the Avengers have always been left up to fate. Let's choose them ourselves. It's like, no. The fate thing is working. <laughs> you know? Yeah, fate, yeah. The fate thing saves lives. I like the, you know, the day unlike any other when they just have to come together. Don't go out there making a, a homework assignment, you know? I want them to, like, redo the Avengers. And I'm tired of the X-Men. I'm tired of the whole mutants being persecuted story. I mean, it's a valid story. And I like Still. it. But hearing it. In every other sentence, one of them says, I mean, it's pathetic. I mean, to the point where, like, Emma Frost would marry Dr. Doom in the future to keep mutants alive. Like, dude, come on. Look, I'm tired of it. I know it. Being a mutant sucks. <laughs> Plus, there's only 200 of them left. They need to reboot that anyway. Yeah. House of M is starting to tick me up. I'm tired of it. All right? Every other word is like, oh, yeah, and then House of M, this happened. And, like, stop it. Yeah, it goes. that goes to another thing that I hated about another book, which I loved until they did it, which is uh, Steel. And this is totally off subject, but there's there's a Superman had um, an offshoot comic book um, for John Henry Irons, the comic book character Steel, and um, it was a great comic book for like eighty for like eighty issues. And then they had an African American uh, um, writer come on and start writing this book. And the moment that he started writing it, it became a political statement. The <laughs> book lasted about five more issues. No one wants to sit there and read a superhero book where every other statement is, because I'm black, you think because I'm black, I don't do that because I'm black. And, because I'm, and, and eventually it was like, well, right. where's it? hit somebody. It's like, dude, look, okay, look, the earth is going to be destroyed in like five minutes. I don't care if you're black. <laughs> I care if I live. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know and, and then like with, with the whole mutant thing, it's like, you know, you get tired of them going, it's because I'm a mutant, right? It's because I'm a mutant, mm. right? They I mean, don't care. Can, yeah. The average person doesn't care. They see you as a superhero, <laughs> yeah, you know? Like, the, the it's only the army that really cares, so blow right, them it's up. it's the army and the hate groups, but you will always have those, whatever you are, yeah. you know? I'm, I mean, if, if you're white, there are hate groups out there that hate you, 
So it doesn't matter what you are. There's a hate group out there. Don't let it rule your life, you know. But the X Men, well, it's a little different different case with the X Men. But well, I mean, they're getting know, shot at. Yeah. So I mean, it and they have giant different. robots yeah. trying to kill them. But I'm getting tired of the whole San Francisco thing too. Like, it's like they're trying to make mutants a parallel for gay people. And it's like, being gay is not like being immortal or shooting lasers at your eye. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand, you know, what they're trying to do, but it's like, you're going to equate being gay to being the Jugger Colossus. <laughs> I, I'm, it's kind of lost in translation, right? I mean, because why else do they keep using San Francisco? Well, I mean, you know, they, they're, trying, they're trying to use just persecution in general. And in, in the '60s and '70s, it was more about races, and now it's more mm. it's more about creeds. Yeah, but it still sucks. Yeah. Eventually, it comes down to I understand that the people are being persecuted, but I'd really like for them to stop talking about it. Yeah, you know, in the '90s, they used to just go do stuff. Right. I mean, like, does it have, has it ever bothered Wolverine? No, ever. <laughs> He's like, you don't like me, I'll kill you. I mean, simple as that. And everyone likes him. I mean, Cat likes him. Yeah. I mean, and really, if Cat likes you, that's really all the validation you need. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> well, no, that's not really true because, okay, now, and, and as I say this, realize Iron Man is one of my top ten favorite superheroes. But Iron Man is kind of a, yeah, this is PG. Okay, he's not really <laughs> a great person. <laughs> so, that being said, Captain America sometimes likes Iron Man too. Because he's trying, he... he Cap's approval is supposed to make you a better person. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out very well. It didn't work out man. at all with Iron Man. Um, but uh, speaking of Cap again, because everything really is about Cap. No, everything's really about Titan. Oh, we'll right. Talk to you about that another time. <laughs> another time. <laughs> but yeah, everything's about Cap. Like, uh, there's a in New Avengers. Um, Wonder Man has just gone insane, or whatever. He's trying to turn the world against the Avengers because he thinks, you know, you know, they started Ultron, they let the Hulk run around, like all this, you know, bull crap he's, you know, blaming them about. And uh like apparently the world's turning against them now. So I wonder if they're gonna put that into the Avengers versus X Men too, because now the world's turning against the, the Avengers. They're like, Cap took too much power from us and you know, how old is he anyway? And all this stuff, like the Avengers are doing all this without getting permission. Like pretty much to just Turning against them because like they broadcasted it to like the world, so now like everyone's all being stupid because you know you tell them one bad thing about someone and they're like, oh, we believe it, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I heard some, I heard some crazy guy say that in a cage. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> but hopefully that that that'll all play into it and whatnot. But uh, it's not going to be that much of a fight. It's going to be like real quick and like a five issue mini series, and then they're going to be like, hey, reboot. <laughs> yeah, which. And I'm not really the biggest fan of reboots, but I have to admit that done correctly, if you re and you have to reboot the whole world, you can't just go reboot X Men. Right. You have to reboot the whole world. But done correctly, a reboot is a really good idea, right. especially when you've got like fifty year, fifty sixty years of convoluted history. It's, it's, it's never it's never been rebooted, right? No, never. Now is the DC reboot the first time they did it? No. It's the first time they, they. It's the first time that they actually just straight up rebooted the whole universe, but they've had these events called um, crisis, mm -hmm. where they go in and they say, "Okay, we've had we have these multiverses, and all this stuff happens in multiverses, and so we're going to slam these multiverses together and create one universe where all the all the stuff has all happened mm -hmm. together." It doesn't work out very well. It crisis. makes it makes everything yeah. It makes everything kind of uh, messy. So eventually, because slamming all these uh, th this history together mm -hmm. didn't work, they were just like, you know what, just wipe it all out. Except for Batman. And that's the problem I have. Is that Batman stayed Batman from where he was at, but everybody else got rebooted. You can't change the Batman. Batman changes you. As he wills. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of have to accept that, because he's the Batman. He had prep time. <laughs> He, he he knew the uh, the reboot was coming, so he's like, you know what? I prepped for this. I'll be okay when the, all the dimensions just shatter. I'll be cool. So, but yeah, and you know what it was really bad is I actually have to buy that because I watched the last episode of the uh, of the Batman show that was mm. on you know on Cartoon Network, <laughs> where he gets told that he's a cartoon, and he's fine with it, right? And he's fine with it. Yeah, 
Because <laughs> he's Batman. He's like, all right, I'm still me. I mean, even though I'm a, I'm a cartoon, you still wish you were me, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I'd like to see Hulk start over, see Cap start. Like, I, I'd like to see them like in a more modern setting, uh, like more modern you know, art style. I like to see how they form, how they start again, how mm-hmm. everyone figures out who everyone else is. You know, and they figure, oh, wait, there's more than just me. Because like, everyone starts out thinking, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. And then they realize it's more more people, and like we have those stories out there now, but it's in the old the old style. I want to see it redone, uh, and hopefully this time, since everyone will be on the same page and there's no new things being made at this point, that everything stays accurate, <laughs> and there's a timeline where you don't have to say that didn't happen. <laughs> I mean, I know it will eventually, but let's like for a couple of years. Go good, you know? Yeah, so, you know, like, Cable doesn't get to be a cyborg, and then suddenly he's a mutant who suddenly right. is not Summer's son, who suddenly isn't really a cyborg anymore, now he's got a virus. Right, but it's now fully taken over by the virus, and it's killing the Avengers, even though I think he's dead. <laughs> wow. Same with yeah. Wonder Man, who's now back, but was dead, but is back. Well, Wonder Man's made of energy. So. No, no, he was, like, dead dead, like, confirmed dead. He got killed in House of M. Like, I don't, like, he just, he was gone. And then he's like, I'm back. And then now he he did his thing, and then now he's just gone. <laughs> I, right? I mean, like, I mean, you you better have a good explanation. Like God Himself was like, you need to do this, <laughs> you know. Well, in the real world, yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen. I mean, yeah, it's like you're dead, you're you're gone. All right. I mean, unless someone has the power to bring you back, which people do, but it didn't happen. So why are you here? I mean, yeah, let's just keep the the history. Yeah, the, the history gets the, the it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how much um, you want to try to keep everything linear when you've had so many people dipping into the pot and so many things that people don't remember. You know, like not every writer who starts writing X Men has read all every X Men. So they write a story. It sounds like a good idea. Some editor lets it go through, and then oh, by the way, Wolverine's now forty two. How's he forty two? He's one hundred and three. No, it's 42. No, it's 42. And so then he just becomes 42. Right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, eventually, because so many different people have done so much stuff on the comic, you just have to start over. Yeah. It, and it, I can't believe that I just endorsed starting that over. Yeah, I'll start over. I just a, endorsed it. I mean, it's a good it's a good time to, to start over, because now that we have the movies out, uh, people are getting into it. I mean, because, like, at least from from my perspective, it wasn't that like like back before the superhero movie craze. It's kind of eh, but now everyone's all hyped about it. Like everyone is hyped about it now. Yeah, Even, like it's now cool <laughs> to be to, to have comics oh, and stuff. I know, dude. Remember when we went to Comic Con and all those hot, all those hot chicks? Right. It's that's it's, that didn't happen when I was in high school. Right. And so now <laughs> and now that it's happening, it's a good time to start over and let people get in because right now. Like, I was just super dedicated to it, so that's why it didn't bother me and, you know, Wikipedia, obviously. But getting into comic books, the history was so hard, you know, because, like, I had to go on Wikipedia and, like, look the history really quick, you know, the general overview. Mm. But, like, how long is it now? Like, came out, like, Cat was out in the 40s, right? Yeah. So it's, like, 60, 70 years of history mm. is very daunting to get into. I mean, that's, like, that's a crazy amount of history. Yeah. But if we start over... I can, I, right I, I can do that. You know, everyone picks the character they like and just follow it. You, you, you're not hearing them referencing House of M. What's House of M? What's Age of Apocalypse? I don't know what any of this is. Or, you know, they're talking about the Human Torch, but they're not talking about the actual Human right. Torch. They're talking about the right. Human Torch robot. Right, the yeah. Movies. The one that walked around Namor. You're like, you, you don't know about the other Human Torch. You know, it's like... It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, the, you were talking about the superhero craze. You know that what's funny? is I was watching Jeopardy the other day, um, and one of the questions, one of the, one of the Jeopardy um, categories mm-hmm. was Marvelous Characters. And the whole thing was just Marvel, mar- just Marvel characters. Oh, we could have oh, we could own that. I owned on that. I, I got every single one of them right. I, what were the questions? Oh, I don't remember, but I bet you if we could look it up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It, they're probably all uber easy for us, huh? They were. It was, was it hard for them? It, well, it was hard for the guy. Like, I, I was in my in a patient's room, mm-hmm. and it was hard for him. He's, like, sitting there going, he's, like, staring at me, like, how the heck do you know all this? You need to go on Jeopardy. I'm, like, no. That particular question was just tailor-made for me. <laughs> right. 
that that would that would have been a good time to be on the show. It's like I'm gonna make all my money on this one on this one topic. <laughs> Yeah, and that would have been it too, because I, I was pretty much done after that, because I'm not that kind of egghead. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, getting off topic here, but yeah, that's that's our first show, which I think we're just going to call the show off topic. <laughs> we're just going to talk for about an hour <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> um, So this has been uh, Kirby Kid. And Black Superman. And this is signing off. Thanks for listening.